Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and today we're going to, well, this is part 19 of my Let's Play of Momus Quest Paradox RPD. Today we're going to handle all the events here in Sarun. Once we enter, he says that we need to get someone to make us some crystal weaponry. But first things first, let's talk to this guy. He's concerned because the accessory seller Mimi is lost. She went to Saloon Hill in order to get something and hasn't returned. So he's concerned, let's go check it out. I tried doing this Let's Play about a half an hour ago, but due to a mistaken recording, I have to start all over again. Alright, a young girl has fallen down here, so we give her some medicine. She tripped and fell down here and lost consciousness. So she's Mimi, and she sells accessories in Saloon. She's got some rewards for us, but she's going to leave before us. She takes a harpy feather and leaves. Minion's glad that that went well. Now before we head back for our reward, there's a small metal in this chest. And in this chest over here, there is star crystal dust. That'll be important later. Remember that I got that. Now why did we talk to this guy in the first place? Turns out he's probably got a crush on Mimi. And he's so glad that she's safe. He's going to give us this small metal. Mimi's in that house, but since we're doing small metals, in this house there's another one. Right here in the dressers. Now Mimi sells accessories here. So they've got their accessory sales person back. In any case, we get this reward. And now she will sell accessories to us. Now what we're really here for is crystal weaponry. So we ask Orlin here about it. She says she was an assassin originally. In fact, she worked under Salon. Do you remember her? She was the assassin of the Sabbath Kingdom and helped us out in our quest to subdue Sara when she was a uh, crazy queen succubus. In any case, Orlin has heard about us. And since we helped out Saran, she would like to help us out too, but she doesn't have any crystal with which to work, so she's going to tell us to handle the bandits in the cave south of here and get crystal from them. Chrome's not really excited about this because mines don't have a lot of dead bodies in them. Even though she swore she wasn't going to do with zombies anymore. But anyway. Bandits, huh? Right off the bat, we get attacked by them. She says she would like to just tell us to leave our money and go, but she thinks we're tasty, so she's going to catch us and have her way with us. That was short. But before we head for the boss, down this way is another small metal in this chest. This is the direction to go to find the boss. But another detour before we do that, up here is where another level of the mines where they have apparently a prison and in this chest you can find the augury stone you should remember I got that it'll be important later in this video and now we can go handle the boss oh notice this it's a barrel that will restore your health and magic and here's the boss but all we want is this crystal. Oh wait, she isn't going to let us walk out with it. So like a boss, she gets to go down. She is the boss of the scale bandits. We want her to stop being a bandit, but she's not going to do that so easily. And furthermore, we hurt her underlings. Remember those girls at the entrance? 
So, she's gonna get back at us. Yeah, she would lasted like twice as long as they did. Alright, she's been beat. She'll let us take the crystal, but she's got a dragon's pride in her, so she's not going to let us have anything else. Villains are pretty stubborn. But in any case, she can't cause any more trouble for a while. But you want to talk to her again. Because if you talk to her, she says she's got nothing. She says she doesn't want anything to do with us, but we can ask her to be our friend anyway. Going on a journey isn't so bad, but she's got her underlings to take care of. She's a good girl, you know. Elias is surprised that she'd be that uh, noble. But anyway, first we get to make those underlings our slaves. No, allies. And then we can come back here. So let's turn on our encounters again. This happened pretty quick in my test run. And then less quickly in my failed first attempt. So we'll just see how long this takes. If we're lucky, we'll get both of our thieves to join us before we get to that crystal. That's about how long it took in the trial run. But naturally, it's not going to go that well. With this, we can get some crystal weaponry blacksmithed for smithed up for us. These two lizard bandits and the lizard bandit boss are all drawn by the same person. I don't recall his exact name, but he's pretty good even though he hasn't contributed a whole lot of characters to the game. I mean, these are really cool designs. Ah. All right, Lizard B. Join our party then. But she gets sent back to the castle. She's not high enough level to be in our party. Now that those two have joined our party, we can turn off encounters again. Alright, she starts saying the same thing. And here's a little saying that she should come with us. And Ren says, we're on this side now, so she doesn't have to hold back. Alright then. She's going to come along and look after her followers. Let's replace Chrome with her. Miranda's actually lower level than Chrome, on account of the grinding we've done with Chrome in our party. But I want to switch some people out. Alright, the scale bandits are going to take over the world. And yeah, more like travel the world and cause a bunch of trouble. She's excited. She's excited too. 
Luca, is it really all right that we did this? Yeah, well, we'll figure out something. Hmm. Lily's still in my party. But we're done in the cave now. Actually, I need to... I need to switch Lily out and put in Puppy. Lily's out, and Puppy is in. I should explain. This section, uh, second option that the members, that the maids give you in the castle, lets you unequip all the members, all your allies that are not in your party. This way we can retrieve that Berserker mask that Chrome had on her quickly and easily. And now let's head in and get Puppy some instruction in crystal working. Alright, first we have to tell her that we're one crystal stuff. Leave her shop. And now we get to converse about how we can do crystal things. And now we're ready to go take on the, Sa the Safare Desert Ruins. There we can find Gnome and beat her up. The Sylph in Luca's head's excited to see Gnome again. The Sylph in our party is probably excited as well. Now it tells us where to find her. Do you remember those ruins we passed on the way north to Saloon? That's the place. But more importantly here, Puppy wants to learn how to beat crystal into weapons. And Orlan would like to do that, but that's not so simple. In order to teach that, she needs the star crystal dust. So where can we find it? Over at Saloon Hill. Do you remember when we went to Saloon Hill? And I told you we'd pick this up and you'd need to remember it. I hope you remembered it because we're using it now. We give it to her and she's willing to teach Puppy crystal making. I got it. Like this? Yeah, dragons are pretty well suited to blacksmithing work. And Puppy in particular has a good sense for the craft. Puppy thanks her. Orlin had some words of encouragement for her to keep working hard and get better. And that's that for Puppy's quests in this chapter, and we get an achievement. Now let's head back to the Maol Castle. Switch out Puppy and put in Vanilla. Now, I should have done this a long time ago, but there is a flag that needs to be tripped that I didn't know about until I started reading the wiki. I thought that Vanilla would speak up when I spoke to her in all my test runs. But apparently you have to come to this shop and speak to the shopkeeper before the next phase of Vanilla's quest will trigger. Look at that, I speak to the shopkeeper now. Vanilla will say, well, while I'm here, stock up on harpy feathers. I've used, it, used, it, used over half of my stock. Okay, leave the shop. And in the Sabasa shop that we just visited, she saw the Fuma Shuriken. So she would like to sell that in her shop, but rather than go to those guys and ask for it, we're going to go to our Shuriken Maker. Shuriken Maker. Remember him? He's here in the job change temple. All the way at the end, Ryoma. So Vanilla asks him to make it. He says it's pretty tough and it's not exactly hobby type work. You see he was making shuriken as a hobby. This is like an actual job now. But Vanilla is able to talk him into it. You know, probably paying him more. Well, under those conditions, sure, he'll do it. So now Vanilla's got that. 
back to the pocket my old castle. Whoops. Enter the shop and leave again. The next phase will be in Magistea. They do darkness stones and light stones. This is like the fire ice and wind stones we got at Lost Room. So we're going to head for Magistea and speak to the item shop there. You know how we had to enter the item shop in Savasa in order to do the fruit with Shuriken part? We never came into this one. You guys all saw me never come into this one. But somehow we knew that there were light stones here. So Vanilla introduces herself after you exit the shop. And they say that they want to make an exchange of it. They want an Agri stone. They were getting a shipment of them, but their carriages carrying it were attacked by bandits. The scale bandits. And now they don't have any. You remember the scale bandits? We beat them up. We recruited them. And we got that diamond in the depths of their cave, which I told you to remember. Did you remember? It was important. Because now, we give it to these guys, and they're willing to help out Vanilla with her shop. So now we get light stones and darkness stones. And that completes Vanilla's quest, so we get her final achievement for this chapter. Now back to Sarun. Everything's in order for us to go recruit Gnome. Yeah, this is the Safaru Desert Ruins, and Gnome will be here. Elias confirms that we've done everything that we could possibly do before this, so now it's time to do it. If you come here before the crystal stuff, or before other things, she'll say, we're not ready yet, but we'll let Luca come here and recruit Gnome if we really want to. It's basically the game telling you you're ready or you're not ready. You remember Gnome running over this way? That was a feint. She actually took a shortcut around to here. And there she goes. Notice this. It's a healing pot. And this is Gnome. She doesn't say anything, so Gnome a Sony asks if she's Gnome. She doesn't say anything again, but she does not. We would like her to lend us her power. And Sylph steps in. Yay, it's Gnome. So, this human would like Gnome to give her give us power. So Sylph says, yeah, Gnome's only met Luca, so... Sony is concerned that they're not really speaking. Are they really conversing here, you know? So before Gnome will lend us her power, we need to show her our power. In other words, we get to fight her. Just so we can have an Elias moment. I said that wrong. A character moment with Elias. She says, well, it can't be helped. We get to beat her up like a sandbag. She has a sand theme enemy, after all. And everybody's excited to beat her up. Oh yeah, I'm Berserk. She lasted three rounds. Alright, she's convinced so we can stop hitting her now. Says Sylph. Yeah, we, did we beat her too much? And she holds out the right hand. Luca's confused. She holds out her right hand. She wants a shake. Come on, shake boy. Oh, right. So Luca feels f power flowing into his body. Now he can... Now he has the power of Earth in him. This is a special summon he can do. So Sylph says Gnome also wants to come along and play with us. So she's going to be our ally as well. Good to have you. You're going to replace Frederica. Alright. We've made Gnome into Elias' servant, so we're done with everything in the Sabasa reason, and we need the last thing. Oh, the last thing remaining for us to do in the Sabasa reason is explore the Tartarus. She tells us where the Tartarus is. 
Sony confirms that we're done in Sabasa except for the Tartarus. So she's excited. Now we think about what kind of parallel universe we're find, we'll find there. And these text boxes will again tell us where to find the Tartarus. It's east from the saloon. And here there's a grave. Odd for a grave to be here. Sylph says Gnome should know. Nutrico says Q. Remember that, it's important. So Sylph is going to translate. Gnome has lived here for a long time. So a long time ago. This girl comes and introduces and asks if she's Gnome. This girl saw her at the Gnome Festival, probably part of the Four Spirits religion. Do you remember that? We read a book about that. And she also saw the Gnome sneak off here, and she followed her. The girl's going to offer Gnome half of this Choco Corone she has from the festival. The Choco Corone is a chocolate pastry kind of thing. So, Half of it for Gnome and half of it for her. With this, they become friends. Now the girl says that her baby teeth have fallen out. And she's been told that if she throws her baby teeth into an oasis, she'll get good strong teeth to grow in after them. So she tosses them in. The girl notices that Gnome hasn't grown at all, even though they've been friends for about a year. She wonders if she'll get big and grow into an adult and then become a mother and a grandmother. All well Gnome stays the same. And she reassures Gnome that she doesn't need to have such a sad face. So they're going to play tag. Gnome has a musical note to say for that. And the girl's back. She says next week she's getting married. She would like to invite Gnome to the wedding. She's an important friend after all. Gnome nods her head. And now there are kids. They're really excited. Of course running around like that they're likely to trip and hurt themselves. Them being so energetic is kind of a troublesome. But she remembers th these kids are about the age she was when she first met Gnome. She's gotten a lot older. But Gnome stayed exactly the same. Here, have a Choco Corone. You remember we split them in half when we met. She nods. We'll be friends forever, she says. No matter how many years pass, and no matter how old she gets. And this is her again. She says she would like to have her grave put at the Safara Oasis, where she first met Gnome. Gnome gets lonely easily. If she's not there, she'll get lonely there, by herself. Friends forever, Gnome. So there's that. That's pretty rough on her. Q! Nuriko produces a Choco Corone herself, splits it in half and gives one to Gnome. Q, 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 Q! So, Sonia says, Nuriko says, that Nuriko is going to be Gnome's friend too, so she doesn't have to be lonely. And Sylph says, Gnome says, Thank you. She's really happy. QQ. 
So they take the two halves of the chocolate corona and eat them. And they became friends. QQQ. Alright, to start with, let's climb some trees. She says. She won't lose the climbing trees. Let's come on. Let's see who's faster, she says. Even though they're friends, they need translation services, huh? But that's a cute little scene, and we get an achievement. And that... will take care of all of our duties. Except... Now that we have Gnome in our party, we want to put her in the front. Gnome and Miranda are actually lower level than... Chrome and Frederica, because Frederica and Chrome were in our party for all kinds of fights. But I want to get some rotation going on in here. So... No. No. That's already. But I grabbed all the Berserker masks back, so we can equip Gnome with one. And now we're ready to move on to the final Tartarus. Which we will do tomorrow. That's going to be the conclusion, and I hope you're looking forward to it. See you tomorrow, YouTube.